As someone who has tracked macros for almost a decade, I understand how extremely daunting it can be to figure it all out. Not only figuring out what your macros should be, but then how to track them. How do you track recipes? How do you track when you're going out to eat and you don't know what all of the ingredients are or what they did when they were making the food? Maybe you just don't know how to make sure you fit that into your day when you don't wanna starve yourself going into a meal. And that is what I'm going to go through with you guys today. I'm gonna be using my fitness pal because that is the app that I'm the most familiar with. Let's start off with how to make your own meals in my fitness pal. This is going to be instrumental in creating ease around tracking. As you'll see here on my screen, it says add yesterday's meal. And that is one of my favorite features on my fitness pal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because that is the same breakfast that I had today. Now that I have this meal in here, what I can do is tap these three buttons at the bottom of the screen and then just hit save as meal. And you can go ahead and put any kind of name that's gonna help you easily recognize what it is, whether that's the breakdown of the specific macros or it's going to be the breakdown of the amounts, you can put any name on it that you want. Now, if I were to go in, edit, and delete that, all I would have to do to add it back is hit add food, go to my meals, and right there, Sue's Banana Pancakes, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, it has gone ahead and tracked for the day. My favorite part about this is when you import it as a meal, it doesn't just bulk import, it still has each individual ingredient. So let's say maybe I had a little bit less banana today because I ran out of banana. I can go ahead and change it in there without having to change the entire meal that I might normally eat. So it allows you for quick and easy changes along the way. Now that we know how to add meals in, let's go ahead and talk about how I would plan for eating out and how I plan my days because these go hand in hand. And the way that I do that is by taking some time to pre-plan. My sister invited me to dinner tonight and I really wanted to go to spend quality time with her, but I know in the past I could have been easily deterred from going because I didn't know how they cooked the food, exactly what the ingredients were, or how to even freaking track it to prepare for going out to eat. So I would have secluded myself and said no because it would have been too hard while I was dieting. So what I did to pre-plan was to go ahead and put in some of the meals I was going to eat before that I went so I could figure out how the allotments needed to go. So I have meal one in because I knew I was going to eat the exact same breakfast. And where I am within this dieting phase, I know that I have enough room to easily eat my first and second meal. And those are my two favorite meals. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my second meal here. And I'm gonna go ahead and scroll to the bottom. If you see that I have six meals and maybe you're my fitness pal just says breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. If you go on the desktop version, you can go ahead and change this to just six meals. And this really helps me out with making sure my meals and snacks are in here in the way that I prefer. Here in meal five, you'll see something that is a rice cake with peanut butter and raspberries, and that's something I eat alongside my lunch. Then coming down to meal six here, you'll see me add in some hash browns, which is something I eat with my breakfast as well, but I wasn't regularly doing that until recently, so I had it separated from the breakfast. And then I also have in here a fruit bar because I was going to train earlier and I was feeling like I needed a little bit of food, so I went ahead and had that bar. So now if I go ahead and click and look at my macros for everything that's been laid out, I've hit 88 grams of protein out of the 150 I'm aiming for. So I have 62 grams of protein to still hit. I've hit 146 carbs of the 225, so I have 79 more carbs. Then I also have some leeway here on fiber, as well as fat, as I have 29 grams of fat I can still do for the day. But the restaurant that we're going to is a steakhouse, and if there's steak, I'm gonna have some steak. So what I did next was go ahead and look at the menu for the restaurant. This is something I recommend to so many of my clients. Again, just taking five extra minutes to look ahead at the menu and make sure that you either can track it or just have an idea of what you're eating so you can plan accordingly for your day if maybe you're not tracking as specifically and taking a more intuitive nature. Looking at the menu and when I went down to their main dishes, I saw that they had a filet mignon. As well as when we're looking at the different meats here, there is also a strip and a ribeye. And a ribeye is gonna be much higher in fat because it's a much more marbled piece of meat. Now, I do enjoy having some fat on my steak, but I actually prefer having a sirloin or a filet, and that is gonna be a little bit lower fat. 
So when it comes to eating out, it's not just about getting the thing that is the healthiest on the menu or the absolute leanest cut of meat. It's about figuring out your preferences and how to make them work for the goals that you have. So I see that their filet is six or an eight ounce. And then that's also gonna come with some roasted carrots on the side and a demi glaze. Now, anytime there's a glaze, a dressing or a sauce, I always ask for it on the side. By being able to control the amount, I normally end up putting a lot less than what they would have put on if they put it out on in the kitchen. And so I'm able to also control my serving size. So going back to my fitness pal, I'm going to head on to my meal three, and I'm going to look at how to go ahead and track this meal. So I'm going to type in the filet mignon and I see here the USDA choice and that's what I'm gonna go with. And there's oftentimes going to be a little check mark saying it's a verified food, but you can also look online to make sure it matches up. If I am searching for something on my fitness pal and I'm not sure if it's the right answer or if it's the right breakdown, I will look it up on Google or I'll look at a few different nutrition labels online to make sure I have the right thing. With tracking the filet, that ended up being 12 grams of fat and 37 and a half grams of protein. But I know I wanna have sides with it too, and I know it comes with carrots, but looking at a few of the other sides here, I also see they have fries on the menu. And let me tell you, I love me some fries. And based on my preferences, I would take a leaner cut of meat or chicken to be able to have fries. That's how I would personally go about it because I love fries. With going out to eat, again, you don't know exactly how they cook foods, but I will tell you, I worked in restaurants for quite a few years and they are pretty generous with the oil. So I always overestimate what it would be if I were to cook it at home. So if I were to have a filet and cook it at home, I wouldn't be using a ton of oil or butter. So this could be a very accurate tracking for what that filet would be. But I'm going to go ahead and assume it either comes with oil or or butter on it or it's cooked in oil or butter. Then I'm also going to take what side I am thinking I'm gonna be getting, which is going to be the French fries and making sure I track for that too. But like I said, it can be so frustrating to search French fry or to search carrot or whatever it may be and trying to figure out what exact one really fits. So I'm gonna let you on in the best hack that I have when it comes to tracking and eating out. So when you go on my fitness pal and you hit add food, you can actually just type in carbs and that is going to give you the carb macro. So instead of having to track each individual ingredient, you can go ahead and take a guesstimation at what this is. Now, of course, getting good at guesstimating comes with practice. If you feel unsure, take a guess and make sure that you keep growing and building upon what that is. You can also use something like your hands for measuring. You can use this quick guideline to be able to showcase how to go ahead and track food with your hands. So what I'm going to go ahead and put in here is I'm going to go ahead and put in 45 grams of carbs and this is going to allow me to have some roasted carrots as well as the carbs from the fries that I'm planning to have as well but it does not count as fiber when I'm just tracking the carbs. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and type in fiber because the carrots are gonna give me some good fiber as well. So if I put in the five grams of fiber, that fiber is actually now gonna be tracked as carbs. So if you think something is around 50 grams of carbs, like I think it is gonna be in this case, then you wanna split it between those carbs and fiber, depending on what that breakdown is going to be. Next up is gonna be tracking fats. And again, I'm always pretty generous when it comes to fats of overestimating or just leaving extra room when it comes to fats. So the steak is already tracked, but these fats are gonna account for any fats that would be on the French fries, as well as any oils that they might be using for cooking. I'm gonna put this at 15, just because I'm not starving going into this meal. So I don't think I'm gonna eat a ton of fries, but I will have the carrots because I love roasted carrots as well. So I am just going to go ahead and track this as 15 grams of fats. But again, when it comes to tracking and eating out, I always recommend overestimating on fats because that is the one really tricky one and the one that starts to tick up a little bit higher when you do go out to eat. 
Of course, you can ask if they don't cook it in oils and use cooking spray, but you don't know if this is gonna be followed to a tea, or again, if maybe they marinate it in something, or it's just left over on the grill. So I always think about being safe than sorry. So now when I go back to my fitness pal and look at the breakdown, I went ahead and had this meal at 27 grams of fat, 50 grams of carbs, and 37 and a half grams of protein. So when I look at what's left for the day, I see I'm out of fats, which is what I expected. And that's why I decided to track the meal I was eating out first. This is another pro tip I would give you here is any time that you are pre-tracking, think about the meals that you want to have no matter what first. So for me, that was my breakfast and lunch where I really wasn't willing to budge on either of those and I did know that I had some leeway to make sure I still could have those meals but then it came to tracking the meal out because then I could make my third meal around that even though I was eating it before the steak meal I could make sure that I had enough of the macros to build out what I needed so with this breakdown of really just protein and carbs left my go-to here is gonna be a protein shake so I'm gonna to go ahead and track a protein shake with some Legion protein since that's my favorite. And since I have some carbs left, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some cereal because I love me some rice checks as well. You're finding out all of the things I absolutely love. And I'm gonna put some strawberries in there because I will likely be having this meal after I train. I love having fructose and of course carbs in place after I train and I just love fruit in general. So now when we go ahead and take a look back at my averages, we see I freaking hit the mark on the head. I am one off for my protein, zero off for my carbs, and zero off for my fat. So I'm super happy and this allows me to go eat a meal out with my sister, really enjoy it, be present, still have french fries and a steak, but still be able to hit my goals. One thing I wanna make very clear is I did not starve myself going into this meal. This wasn't even considered a free meal, but even if it were, her I wasn't gonna be not eating going into the meal. And as you can see where my calorie amount is and where my macro amount is, I'm not being shy about what my meals are. A lot of my meals are four to 600 calories each. Even if one of my meals was going to be a protein shake and some carbs, it just was how things laid out that I had a little bit less fat to give to that meal because I decided to have red meat. Again, I could have made a different choice based on the menu and my preferences, but I took my preferences in line with what my goals were and married them beautifully. And it allows you to go into the situation stress-free, which is exactly what I was. I didn't worry about what I can and can't do and trying to monitor everything that I ate. I knew the game plan. I went in, I ate, I had a great time, and I'm still on track to hit exactly what I want to. Hopefully this breakdown was helpful for you guys and being able to alleviate some of that uncertainty and stress with eating out. And hopefully you say yes to going and doing things now that you have the tools to navigate those situations. But I did tell you I was gonna do one more thing and that's going to be how to go about tracking a recipe. To start off, you'll just go to add food and then you'll swipe over and you'll see my recipes. And you'll see at the top here, there's a few different things that you can do. You can create a recipe, discover a recipe or import a recipe. If you go ahead and click create a recipe, you're able to to go ahead and put in your recipe name and list out each ingredient and be set to go. You put in the amount of servings, it breaks down the macros for you and you're all good. So if you've made your own recipe or if you wanna track possibly a meal this way or something like a crock pot meal or soup as those can be really difficult to know how to break down, put in all of the ingredients, say how many servings you want it to have. And then when you're weighing out the soup, you'll just go ahead and take a fourth of whatever the total weight is, put it in your bowl and you will have that tracked. But the more fun thing for me is going to be importing a recipe. So when you click that, it has at the top to go ahead and put in your recipe name or the URL. So I'm gonna go over to this lemon poppy seed muffin. My husband loves lemon poppy seeds. So of course I had to find a recipe for him that he would enjoy. And selfishly, I made sure that it was dairy free too so I could enjoy it. All you're gonna do here is copy the address and then when you go back to my fitness pal, you can paste the URL. Then you just hit go 
and it brings up the site to make sure that it's the right site, which is very helpful. And then you can go ahead and just say import recipe. And this is going to lay out all of the ingredients that were listed in the recipe. I will caution you to go and double check it got all of the ingredients, especially if the recipe has multiple parts to it. Like maybe there is a part about the chicken marinade, there's a part about cooking the rice, and then there's a part about a slaw or a salsa. Sometimes it'll only import over one part at a time where you can just go into that website and highlight everything and just copy it over in here. So I just wanted to make that one note because I have missed a few ingredients doing this a little bit too quickly. So once all of the ingredients and you've double checked that they're all in there, you just hit this little arrow at the top and it goes about matching the ingredients. So then on here, it lists what it was originally listed as and then what ingredient it found to match to this. So if there's a certain brand that you're using. So for example, this talks about this gluten-free all-purpose flour and it's this Pamela's brand. If that's not the brand I'm using and I wanna put in a different one, I can go ahead and click here and say search for an alternative. And not only is it gonna pop up all these different gluten-free flours, but I can also search a specific one if I want to. And then it's also going to have the amount. So you can double check and make sure those are all in line. Most of the time they do an incredible job at bringing the ingredients over. Over. But for example, here it talks about a egg and this wouldn't be the input I would use for an egg. So I am just going to search for a large egg and add that one in as well as this almond milk because of the way it was brought in from the website and saying the room temperature, I think things got a little bit wonky. So I'm just going to search for almond milk. So then you see here at the bottom, it says it's 800 calories for zero servings, which is not what we're going for. So if we look back at the recipe here, we see that this is a small batch and so it's for three servings. So I can go on in here and hit three servings. And then when I go ahead and hit this upper arrow again, not only does the beautiful picture of the recipe pop up, so does the title and I can change that title. And then the breakdown of the muffins themselves so I know exactly what that looks like. So you can save and log it or just go ahead and save if you're doing this for a later date. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name here. I don't need all of this in the name. Lemon poppy seed muffins. And then I will go ahead and hit save. So then next time I want to eat that recipe, all I have to do is if I'm back on the MyFitnessPal, I hit add food, I go over to my recipes and there it is right there, ready to go. And I can go ahead and track it. If you have any questions on how to go about something, then definitely leave it down below because I would love to be able to help you out and just make this easier. That's what I'm all about, making food easier, making macros easier, making life easier, anything I can do to facilitate that.